Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, it's Rickety Games. I'm Sydney and today we are here with Little Nightmares 2. This is the finale episode. We just went all Neo. <laughs> and we are here in the Signal Broadcast Tower. What we've been dreaming about this whole time. Drawing us in. And I'm very excited to see where it brings us, what channel it takes us to. If you guys don't know what's coming, you're in for quite the treat. We've got to save our bestest of besties, our little six. So let's get into it. Everything floats in here. We all float down here. Let's just go. I was trying to see if there's anything we could pick up. <gasps> Ruh -ro. The eye watches that door, but not this one. <gasps> Whoa. Trippin'. This is one of the coolest levels. I almost don't want to ruin the vibes by talking. So creepy. Everything is topsy turvy here. Here we go. Rut row. We don't have any flashlight and no remotes. I think we go back the way we came. And then we... Oh... Other than the portal effect, it's just fun to play with. You can hear the music come out of one door or the other. So I think we follow the music. Oh, we do. My color scheme is really working here. This is the rickety color scheme. I love the chime too. Where is it? So cool. The color, the softness, the lighting, the music. This is my vibe. Push this one? Oh, I can. That's right. Oh. Well, we don't want to go that way. We want to go in this door. And then here. Woo! Rip. How about that? We're getting higher. It's just so mystical, so whimsical. Oh, I hear it. Whoa. Thank you. 
here. Do I have to make it back across? I think I do. Oh wait, don't I have to... The beam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got it, I got it. It was this. That's right. Because I have to go through this one twice. Nope, not that one. The far one. This one. We're going to ignore the ooey gooey pile of mm, rubble behind us. Not that one. I always fall for the same one. Oh. Wait, it changed. Is it this one? Oh, it is. Is it this one? Yes, it is. Ooh. Going up. I think we've reached the top. So cool. Oh, fuck that teddy bear. I should have explored. I six. Offer her something else. What have they done to you? Hey. The mutated six, like dark six. Oh, I break the music box, don't I? For some reason. Why? She liked it. But I think it like breaks the spell. But it also kind of pisses her off. Because it like makes her bad, doesn't it? Oh yeah, she's pissed. Sorry! I'm trying to get my me-sized bestie back! Oh, I just got smushed. Damn, she snatched me fast. I just want my bestie back! Oh boy. Go, 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 go! Wow! Did she get me? Come on! Go, 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 we got it! No! <laughs> Definitely not under the table. I'm the only object in the room worth hiding under. In here. It's interesting that she doesn't really have like the wherewithal, like it just kind of messes with her mind. Because you would think like knowing how many times we hit under things that she would look under there, but I suppose not. Give it to me. Oh. Can't believe what they did to my six! My my six tur. Final boss time. You ready? Alright, so we have to draw her out 
with the music box. Because we want to smash the music box. We also want to get these other doors open, I think. But I don't remember how we do it. Maybe like that. She doesn't like that. <laughs> All right, we gotta call her name and then she'll leave. We should put the ax closer. Ah. Where's my bestie? I'm alone over here. With very little gravity. There we go. Doors open! Damn it. I was trying to move the axe closer. She's a bit more pissed. Oh, Jesus. Oh, whoops. I can't get close to her at all. Oh, oh no. So the strategy that I'm trying to do is essentially drag it, the axe just a little bit closer every time. She's really volatile, but this is the furthest spot from her in the corner. So if I can kind of drag it up as much as possible. All right, maybe I don't do that. Oh, come on, the fucking fingers. Oh. You have to be careful about her. She comes through the door a little bit. It's so fucked up if you think about it. Because the music box was the first thing she was playing with when we found her, right? And we axed down the door and it scared her half to death. And this is where we end it. I know the, bo the boss fight is not over, but like that's something that like I'm thinking about. I don't know which way we go. Oh, there it is. Right, this is how we found her. Like, we axed down the door. We scared her half to death with the box, but... We took her on the adventure, right? We got fucked up for it. She's just trying to protect her music box, and he's trying to protect her. And sadly, oh wait, I don't have the axe anymore. Oh, it's over there. Oh shit. Fucked, fucked. Go faster! Ah. Oh. Go, go, go. Oh, okay. Nope, 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 nope. Wrong timing. Oh, it took me forever. 
I mean, the one before took me forever, too. You have to, like, figure out the best way. The poor music box. <laughs> Get fucked. Fuck this up. Go. Go, 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 go. Woo! Come on. Come on, no. destroyed my music box. I will destroy you. <laughs> oh. Why six? been betrayed. Ugh. Now we look like a mini Sebastian Castellanos <laughs> in our trench coat with a gooey crap around us. Oh man. Six has always maintained her murderousness. It's kind of an interesting question as to why she does that, though. I will be king of the underground. Or just get stared at for eternity.
yeah, that's right. That's right. He grows up. That's why he is a thin man. That's the reason that we could face each other. It's the reason we had the same power. It's the reason we could take him down while we were drawn to the signal. Because it was ours. us what we could become to the dream it's so good half hat it would be cliche to collect them all signal interruption it's all over now oh so I guess I got some of the hats <laughs> I guess I already got half of them maybe um oh that ending I always remember about six, and for some reason I forgot about Mono until I saw him in the chair, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right, he grows up. And obviously it makes sense for his power and like why he's drawn to the signal, but the question now becomes, right, is the pale man, I want to call him pale man, the, is the, the thin man that we see a projection of Mono's mind? Because that's how I see the eyeballs at the end, right? Like, they're all staring in at him. It's like his anxiety is, like, crumbling in on him. He's being watched. Um, he doesn't know how to deal with things. Six just betrayed him, right? And he's, like, panicking. And then, right, it closes in on him. And then it just kind of shuts down. And he grows up and he becomes this, like, bitter man, right? Intent on controlling things which is how he does things through the tv right through the broadcast through the signal and i guess it's sort of a you could interpret it as like a, a looper thing or like a um like a terminator thing you know or like the sci-fi loop essentially the the paradox which is like to destroy yourself so you don't become that right don't live long enough to see yourself become the villain and six helps with that or you could see it as six instigates that, right? That is what he's afraid of, of becoming that person. And that's why he helps six. That's why he tries to be the better person to free her and to go together and to be together until at the very end she betrays him. And that is like his villain origin story, right? And it's sort of like that's his worst fear, his worst nightmare come true, that he becomes like the adults around, the, the monsters that he sees, the things that he's afraid of, the people he's afraid of. Um, because Little Nightmares has a lot to do with the suffering of the children, of the people and stuff, but it also has to do with like being a scared kid, scared of the world around you, right? The darkness, the strange noises, things you don't know about, the adults, right? The adults that seem scary. Um, teachers, parents, strangers, right? 
and they're distorted in a way that you know is like the overactive imagination of a kid but um and then there's obviously more to the world that there is actually something going on obviously there's something really screwed with the people that have been killing themselves that are on the maw that are being possessed that are being distorted and taken over so there's definitely like a lot obviously going on that is both real and probably mental and I think one of the interesting questions is why does Six betray Mono right and you could have it go back to the music box right Six has always been alone and the only thing she's got is that music box when we first meet her um and Mono takes a hammer to it he takes her on this crazy adventure you know they go into all this danger and then in trying to help her he kind of hurts her right and I don't think she understands that it always comes from a good place and you know that good intentions is what ends up biting him and that's she's not you know good Six has always been shown to be erring on the darker side of things. She's got these kind of bad thoughts and the more corruption that she gets exposed to, the worse she becomes and the more desperate her situation gets, the more um, the worse things she is forced to do, right? And you have to still keep in mind like she is a kid so she's very impressionable but You know, she's definitely making choices, you know, early on, especially in Little Nightmares 2, um, before we ever reach the corruption of the lady, right? That um, she's already murdering people straight up. So there's something very interesting about Six's nature. She's just not good, even though you want to root for her because we know her, right? She's kind of an anti-hero. As I was saying at the end of the first Little Nightmares, right? You go through the whole game trying to root for her, and at the end... She's not really someone you want to root for. I mean, she takes the power of the lady. She takes over everything. um, And it feels like deservedly so, but you know it's bad. You know she's turned fully bad and embraced the sort of shadow self, the darker sides of herself that, you know, you wouldn't want a kid to embrace. And then you could also argue that, you know, in Mono trying to protect Six, Six is trying to protect herself. And, you know, there's that situation, right? But you could also say that Mono is trying to protect her and she is trying to protect Mono by stopping what she sees him becoming, maybe. As he absorbs the glitches and gets, like, mesmerized and taken over by the signal, it gets worse and worse throughout the game, right? It's longer time, we get closer to the door, closer to what's behind it, and we now know right the thin man is behind that door so the closer he gets to opening that door the more he becomes the thin man right on that path so there is something there is something to be said about maybe six can see that coming right and her intentions in betraying mono right are to protect him from becoming the worst version of himself and depending on how you read the ending of the game that either backfires and he does end up becoming the worst person of the game um or it's all kind of a mental thing and he becomes trapped in you know that vision of himself because he's alone again and he doesn't have anybody but i think the best way to put it would be Right, she's trying to do her best maybe to help Mono. Mono is trying to help her and their good intentions both kind of end up screwing them. And I feel like that's very little nightmares because they have a very pessimistic view of things that are going on. Things are much darker than they are and you know, the the tone of things is like you want it to be sweet, you want it to be innocent, but it's nothing but horror. It's scary, it's dark, it's a brutal world that's there, right? And Six trying to help Mono, you know, not become the worst version, and he ends up becoming that version, right? It's very Harvey Dent, very Dark Knight, very, you know, futile attempts to try and save him. Anyway, I think that's kind of the way that I interpret it. I'm sure there's many more ways, though. 
I didn't really stop to look at much of the scenery throughout the game, but there's plenty of videos on YouTube, especially, that kind of connect the world that you see with the Ma and with the lady, and that she is in pictures, I think, in like the cabin with the hunter, and um, I don't think she's seen with the pale man, but like, oh, it's been so long, but there was a connection between the two of them. And there, there is something very interesting to be said about how Mono ends up turning into the Thin Man. So, could you theorize that, you know, the lady is not Six, and we know that. Six almost becomes a version of the lady at the end, right? She takes over the maw, she climbs the stairs to the top, she has her power, she can devour anything that she wants, right? And take it for her own. And from souls to food, she becomes the new proprietress, essentially, right? If she stays on that ship, which it is implied that she does. And she becomes almost the worst version of herself due to her circumstances. And Mono, I think, tries not to be, but he's drawn towards that and then becomes forced to at the end, kind of the way that Six is almost forced to due to circumstance. Which is very interesting. I'm honestly kind of, like, fried, so I don't really know what else to add, but it was an absolutely amazing game. Like, I absolutely loved every bit of the mechanics. I will say, the boss fights get a little old when you have to, like, do it over and over and over again. But I've also played a bunch of episodes in a row, so, like, my fingers were like, okay, the trying to, like, run, and I feel like I couldn't hold the controller hard enough, and I was starting to lose control of my controller there at the end. But, um, save the frustrations on my own personal end. Um, the new mechanics, the new bosses, the ability to kind of wield some small weapons. Um, the various puzzles that are throughout the game are such an amazing ad, and I love that they did that. They just upped the ante, and they upped the horror. Because the first game wasn't that scary. I mean, it's got very creepy vibes. It's got very, you know, dark themes to it. Um, there's a horrifying kind of backdrop to it, but the game itself isn't really straight horror. And I remember the um, devs talking about how Right? It's not really a, a stealth game because stealth would imply a lot of power, like control, and you don't have that as a child, as the, as the kids that we play. So they called it like hide and seek, right? Because there's that aspect that you're always trying to avoid danger. And they carry that through into this and the stakes just get higher. And it's interesting to see where they end up from here, right? We know Six has to survive because Little Nightmares 2 is the prequel to Little Nightmares 1. And there's one other game other than the DLC that we played, which is simultaneous to one. It's like a little bit before one, uh, but then ends up being simultaneous to it because obviously the gnome situation puts that kind of in the middle to end of the game, I would say. So it starts as the prequel and then we see Six on her journey as she's going and the kid, you know, runs parallel to that. And then we know where she ends up, her, her final destination. So there's one more game called Very Little Nightmares. It's only a mobile game for some reason. I don't know why it's only a mobile game, especially since it is canon to the story. Um, I'll see if I can play it. It's a bit awkward because it is like solely on mobile, but there's always a will, there's a way. Um, but that game explains, as far as I remember, I played it briefly, I don't think I ever finished it, but the game explains how Six gets to the world that we see her in. I think it's how she gets to the mall, maybe, or how she ends up in the cage that she ends up in with the hunter, and where Mono picks up from there, and then from there on she goes to the well, the, the mom. So there's that. But um, just progression in the games, you know, the first one was so simple. A lot of the chapters were really short. And the second one, all of the chapters were like an hour. 
Um, if you kind of speed run it, I mean, you could probably make it through like half an hour or 40 minutes through them much shorter than just, I was exploring as well just to find hats and stuff. I clearly only found half of the hats, so I was missed a lot of things and I think I missed a couple of the shadow glitches. Um, but I think overall I was satisfied with like kind of where we found things. Um, but the whole game is just absolutely fascinating and it's amazing to see it progress to something so much bigger and I only hope that they continue the trend with Little Nightmares 3. I know it's a different studio, but I do have high hopes for the story of it. It is very unique, it's a very particular story and I feel like it would be hard to progress with it if you didn't have the right pieces in place. And it's just such an amazing, amazing world. I definitely see why so many people want to do so many things with it. I remember a long time ago, it's clearly in development hell, uh, or if it's been greenlit entirely, um, then it's probably just the stop motion that's taking a long time, but they uh, announced that they were going to do a TV show about Little Nightmares that took from the game and it was going to be done by the Russo brothers who are most notable for their work on the Avengers and Marvel franchises and stuff, but they were going to be executive producing the show and they were going to have Henry Selick was going to be the director, at least for the first episode. Um, I'm not sure about the whole series, but I know at least for the first episode. And Henry Selick, if that's not a name that you know, is actually the real director behind Coraline and The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, it's Tim Burton's IP. It's his story. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas, but he was not the director on it. It was Henry Selick, and it was the both of them that, you know, crafted the characters and the stop motion and stuff, and then he went on to do Neil Gaiman's Coraline, and Paranorman, that's what it was called. Um, Paranorman, he did that one. All kind of similar spooky themes. It's got that kind of, you know, stop claymation animation type of feel. Um, I think it would be brilliant to do in the Little Nightmares franchise. It would fit it absolutely perfectly. But like I said, I don't know if it's caught up in development hell or if it is actually fully greenlit and um, just uh, taking a long time to do. That type of animation just takes a long time. I could probably look it up and see what it is, but um, I haven't heard anything on it, and you know they've obviously been doing a lot of other projects. That doesn't mean it's necessarily canceled, but you know there, there's there's a lot of stuff that go on behind the scenes with shows like that. And if Little Nightmares didn't have the biggest audience, then there's no incentive to do it. But I feel like with you know new TV shows like Fallout coming out and those success were on those, they might try to put a rush on it or bring it back. Either way, the franchise is fantastic no matter what and game form is where it started and here is where we leave it, honestly. It's an amazing, amazing game. I was so proud to see the game progress in its mechanics, in its story. It gives us a little bit more, you know, we have just a little bit more of the world that looks like everything is crumbling into pieces. It's clearly post-apocalyptic. Um, there was something with the TVs and the signal broadcast that made people go crazy that absorbed their mind, that took them, you know, into the state of mindlessness and literally melted their faces and corrupted them. And then from there, it looks like the world just goes into this, like, decay. And the land doesn't look all that inhabitable, so it makes sense that something like the Maw would exist, where, you know, the civilization that th survives and thrives the best would be in the ocean somewhere. We don't really get to know anything more about the Maw. We just know that there are some sentient people around. They're just not, you know, visually okay, right? They're just, uh, I guess, caught some of the symptoms that we see in the Pale City. Um, and everyone's wearing masks of some kind. You know, there's definitely something deeper you could say about how nobody is themselves. They're all hiding something behind a mask intentions or their face or the disfigurement, the lack of their mind, of their agency, right? You know, the guests themselves are pretty mindless and they're gluttonous and they just kind of go after what their basic need is, which is to feed and to, to eat, right? And then you have the same thing with the people in the Pale City, right? They're mindless in the the idea that their, their mind is literally gone, it's taken, it's overcome by the television and that's all they look at that's all they can see and that's all that they want and they're just wasting away in front of the, the screens 
and the children are left to fend for themselves in this world and you know that in and of itself is horrifying so it's no wonder that someone like Six ends up turning out the way that she does you kind of have to be ruthless in order to survive you just will be destroyed otherwise and Mono is a good example of I think what we expect from a child to be a little bit more scared you know taking a little bit of bravery in there has a little bit of courage to to kind of make it through but ultimately is just trying to make his way and you know six you could argue has a greater intention to you know consume the fear that consumes her right in her in her need to be you know in control to regain control to help herself in the only way that she probably knows how it's kind of tragic but it's full circle Obviously, there's a lot more to Little Nightmares that we don't know. There's a lot of things that they don't explain. And, you know, the games themselves, they give you bits and pieces, bits and answers here and there, you know, about the gnomes, about the thin man, about the city. You know, we get kind of these little hints about what is going on, but obviously we don't have the full picture. But maybe Little Nightmares 3 will give us some more answers, or maybe it'll wrap it up in a neat bow. I don't know. Trilogies tend to be very you know, neat. So we'll find out more when that comes out later this year in 2024. Hopefully it doesn't get delayed or anything like that. I know it's a different studio, but I still have high hopes for it. I really love this franchise and I know you guys do too. So we'll play it and keep an eye out for it as it comes. Until then, if you guys want to enjoy the Little Nightmares franchise in general, if you haven't been watching it all along, you should check out the very first one, Little Nightmares, but it is actually a sequel to this one. It will be right over here. And if you guys want to check out the story that is in between those two and kind of simultaneous to one that I mentioned, the DLC will be right over here. It's called Secrets of the Maw. Enjoy, guys. And uh, keep cozy from the nightmares.